This is the Royal Game of Ur, so named because it was discovered during the excavation of the Royal Cemetery in the city of Ur in ancient Mesopotamia. Its common name is the Game of 20 Squares. Experts agree that it's at least 5,000 years old, making it one of the oldest board games in the world. Even more interesting is that it was the dominant game around the entire Mediterranean for 3,000 of those years. Which begs the question, why? The reason is that it's the perfect game. It's simple enough for children to play, yet quickly responds to subtle strategies, giving advanced players distinct advantages. Its fast pace can be played in as little as 10 minutes, and typically has multiple reversals where first one player, then another, gains an advantage. Best of all, up until the final move, it's impossible to tell which player will win. The game of Ur is a race game. Each of the two players has seven pieces, which are placed on the board and moved around until they exit. The first player with all of his pieces off wins. Moves are the, determined by the throw of four binary dice. Now, originally, the dice were these pyramid-shaped things, which are really difficult to pick up. So I recommend using just regular dice that have been painted so it have, they have three sides that are white and three that are black. They serve the same purpose and they're a lot easier to pick up. If a roll turns up all four black, you lose a turn. It counts as a zero. If you roll and one comes up, you get to move a piece one place. Two, two places, and so on, up to four places. Each player has a side. The first four squares and the last two are safe squares. The opponent can't get into these. The common squares in the middle are the combat zone. To exit the play field, you have to throw an exact number to get this man off. For example, to get him off, you'd have to throw a one. Only one piece can occupy a square. If an opponent lands on a square with one of your pieces, for example, he threw a two, one, two, he sends you home and you have to start over again. If this sounds like a lot like Parcheesi, it is, except that it's much faster and dynamic and also it's 4,000 years older. Landing on a square with one of these red and blue flowers awards you an extra turn. This square is particularly important because it's a safe square. A player cannot knock you off of this square, even if he lands. For example, he threw a two, one two, he can't knock you off. Also, if this is his only move, he loses a turn. And that's it. Well, almost. Here's where the business of using binary dice makes sense. Statistically, throwing a one or a three is four times more likely than throwing a zero or a four. More importantly, twos are six times more likely than either of those two options. Knowing this gives a player an enormous advantage because he or she knows to avoid placing his piece two in front of an opponent's piece because it's almost certain this guy's going to roll a two and knock you home. Equally, you want to maneuver your pieces whenever possible to be two behind your opponent because that gives you the greatest chance of throwing a two and knocking him home. If you want to buy one, you can get them from Amazon and they run anywhere from forty to a hundred dollars. But one can be made at home for as little as a few dollars. Here's how. Use the link on the screen to open an image file of the game board. Size it to fit your paper and printer and print it out. This can be played on as is, glued to a piece of cardboard or preferably attached to a piece of wood. Using wood is nice because it elevates the play field, making picking up the pieces a lot easier. If an inkjet printer is used, a light spray of clear coat will prevent the ink from running if water gets spilled on it. The dice are any dice painted as you can see with three black and three white sides. Making two sets makes the game go a lot faster because they don't have to be passed and forth between the two players. The player pieces can be anything from pebbles to buttons, as long as they're different enough so that each player has an identifiable set. I like these cheap craft glass nodules because they're easy to pick up. The five dots design is traditional. 
To prevent the pieces that have finished their run on the board from getting confused with those yet to start, I like turning them upside down. The happy faces are not traditional. And that's it. Making one can take as little as half an hour. Try it and I'm sure you'll be surprised at how great a game this is. You'll soon discover that each game has its own personality. Some are dominated with constant attacks with pieces repeatedly being knocked off, while other games have little interaction at all and turn into simple races. Everyone in my family likes it and I'm sure you will too. Thanks for watching.